Of the Copenhagen Wolves, third time around, third ban as well for Jax. That's been taken away by Gabit and the Evelyn ban finally against Amazing and Diamond. These are all bans we've seen throughout the first three games, uh, the first two games, sorry. Now we'll see if they go with Yasuo here as that final ban. Kautard, you know, he's, he's had some good games on Yasuo, but it's also had games where I just thought, hmm, not really sure how that was. Actually picking out Lucian here, which is something that they, of course, did in game number two as well against Forgiven. And I mean, Forgiven, he's always, we've said it over and over again, always going to be a big threat in all of these games. Taking him out of your comfort zone is one way to really throw him off his game. And then Thresh banned out as well. Eddie's just a god with Thresh, that's that's for sure. Kazik's left open though, and that'll be a, a pretty easy choice for first pick for Gambit, I think. Yeah, it looks like it will be first lock-in for them. So, what are the Wolves going to go with? Because there is a banner missing here. It is Yasuo, he's not been picked up, but... They're going to go with the tried and tested. It's going to be Rise and Caitlyn locked in very quickly for the Wolves. Yeah, Rise and Caitlyn taken. And I think Caitlyn for Forgiven because basically he plays Lucian or Caitlyn. There is real two core champions that we've seen. Teams try and really target Forgiven by banning Caitlyn and Lucian against him. And of course he does play other AD carries and has done to uh, great success as well. But this time around Caitlyn. Genja I'm not really worried about, to be honest, in terms of AD carries, because he plays pretty much everything. He's not scared of having a bit of diversity. Rise in there for Young, but we saw in that last game that late game potential that you've got, Ooh. but you have to feel they didn't really use them. Now, this could be interesting. Irelia, we saw it in the quarterfinal games. It wasn't very good, was it? It wasn't the best, to no. be honest. But. Irelia is a strong champion right now. You know, we've had Kevin on here all day. He's been harping on non-stop, nagging away at us, telling us how good Irelia is. It's almost like Wicked was with us all day long, but instead, and actually, ironically, Wicked's been tweeting out like, it's not fair. Everybody gets to play Irelia with me. Well, you know, if you play it well, suddenly you get it banned against you. It is going to be Darian on Irelia. We're going to have to see how it works out for him. He pulled out Pantheon in the last game, so it can't get much worse. Well, <laughs> If you go back to those quarterfinal games and how he performed on Irelia, it was a typical Diamond, uh, Darian performance in my eyes. He started to fall a little bit behind, then he started just diving in there and ended up dying, I think it was seven times in the first game. Definitely not the highlight of his career, that one, but as you said, Irelia is strong right now. Let's see what the Wolves actually end up with this time around. Looking at possible Sin Shao pick here for the jungle. Champion which... Uh, well, I'm not sure if Amazing has stronger picks to go in there. It's funny because we've seen Elise still being mm. highly valued by a lot of players. I think that's an option for Amazing, but he's obviously going for uh, Sin Chao this time around. And why not? Those well, kind of junglers very popular right that's now. That's not also like. discount. You know, Amazing's got a highlight reel this year of Lee Sin plays. Yeah. It is available, hasn't gone towards it, favoring that Shin Zhao, who even Diamond's been saying he's very strong, but Diamond himself seems to be going with that Kha'Zix. Kha'Zix, pretty much the number one pick throughout the playoffs so far this this week. And we do see, again, it's going to be a Morgana pick for Unlimited. And it may well force Eddie to fall back onto the old faithful, Sona. That champion is very strong, and it, it will stop the likes of Shin Zhao, who's going to have to dive into that team in their tracks if he piles in towards Gambit. Been pretty impressed with the Sona that we've seen today as well. SK Gaming, of course, ran it in a couple of their games. Still, there's 20 seconds to go, so uh, let's not dwell on that one too much. We can see Eddie there in deep thinking mode. And this uh, is this is unusual. This is where we normally see the trolls. We'll see the Teemos, there. everyone be bouncing around, but he's actually focusing on what he needs to play. Looks like it's going to be Nami. We've seen Nif playing it a bunch of times today. And Oriana for Alex Hitch. I'm not convinced by that one. It is a champion, obviously, he's got great versatility. It's going to give them off them a lot in terms of that defensive ball. Obviously, we're going to see Aurelia and Kazix both pouncing in there with that defensive shield on them, possibly pulling the shockwave of everyone. But I like to see Alex on Assassins, but clearly, he is lacking gigantic amounts of confidence in these matches. He has not played at his best at all in the playoffs. No, I completely agree with you with that one. He didn't look to be Alex Hitch. And we've, we've had this discussion many a time before. Do you have Alex Hitch on an assassin champion or do you have it on someone like this Oriana, like the Zeeks even in that last game? And if we think back to the time when Alex 
first heavily playing uh, Oriana, we think back to Moscow in the summer split of last year where he actually played three games I think in a row it was where he really performed well on that Oriana, he needs to bring that today. We see that the final pick coming out here will be Twisted Fate. Glad to see Twisted Fate back in action. Yeah, we've seen him starting to rise to uh, the forefront once again over in the OGN. I think Faker played it today at one point, but uh, We'll see what Kaltar can do with it. It's the first time he's going to be playing it in this spring split. So it's a champion that it's hard to deny. You know, obviously has always had that split push potential and counter split push as well. He can go down and intercept things alongside Youngba. I wonder if they're going to try and go for a 1-3-1 here. I'm not too sure what Copenhagen Wolves. It would be very unlike Copenhagen Wolves to play that style. Yeah, it would be, and we know Rise is definitely not what you would call a tower-killing monster. In no, fact, no, that's for pretty sure. Pretty much the polar opposite of a tower-killing monster. He's like a little baby when it comes to killing towers. Not sure uh, how a baby would kill and towers, but that's how I imagine him. And we've seen, you know, there was changes to Twisted Fate. You can hold the cards longer. You will have a longer yep. choice to pull the cards, but. You know, we've seen the likes of Reggie playing it many times. He even himself himself is like, I keep pulling blue cards, man. I want a yellow, but I keep pulling a blue. Yes, it gives you more mana, gives you more damage, but it's the stun you kind of want. We'll see how Kartar can do it. He's switched through a number of champions, played Cassidy in game one, let's not forget, to great effect, and managed mm. to win that game. Twisted Fate, though, bringing that to the cards, bringing it out maybe as a last Gambit against Gambit. It's going to be a risk. See what you did there. Uh, risk, it's but it's, it's, <laughs> it's one of those high risk, high reward plays as well. I mean, if Kaltar has any kind of game like he did on Cassidy, 4.5 Cassidy, there was the argument, is he any good? Is he worth playing? Is he good enough for this level? Kevin gave him a 4 out of 10 compared to his old 10 out of 10. Uh, but Kaltar showed us otherwise. Well, here we go in game. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The final game of the evening will, of course, start with a pause. It's going to be coming, don't worry. So, Gambit are the blue team, and the Copenhagen Wolves are the red team, so let's not get carried away. There's a problem for Eddie. Eddie is out having a, uh, a client restart. You can see the referee already on that one. Darian, eyes closed, focus. You know, we like to tether away through it. We made fun of the last game, the fact that it was drawn out, but really, their livelihoods are on the line here. And mm. This is a big thing. I mean, Gambit have been involved in the League of Legends scene since Pretty much season two, you know, the Intel Extreme Masters Kiev was when they burst on the scene ourselves. We happened to be casting it that big, important game as the empire they were back then against SK Gaming. And they've been at the forefront of the European scene since then. It would be tragic to see them go in towards the promotion series, the relegation. But then again, you could argue the Copenhagen Wolves deserve this spot as much as anyone. Well, the Wolves fought last year harder than... Mm. Any team. 160 plus games, I think, in the Challenger they played. That is a lot of games a lot as an amateur games. team. And they, they fought as a team to get to where they are now. You know, they had Reckless as their sub for this time. And when he went back to Fnatic after turn 17, everyone's like, how are they ever going to survive? How are they ever going to find someone on this level? And I tell you what, Forgiven has proven that he is definitely up there with the best of them. Big changes. Oh, Eddie comes straight in. Face check in there. Manages to flash away, but Amazing's caught on towards him. Three talent strike. Dark binding. Everything that could have landed for the Wolves did. I was just about to mention that Eddie has gone with that big level one play. He's got a pink ward and a green ward. This was so important for Gambit. They wanted to make some level one tactic, but it's backfired immediately. And look at this, the Wolves are actually chasing them up to the top side of the map here as well. This could be a little bit dangerous. There's a stun card coming on to Alexic. Do they have the damage here though? No, they don't. That's a good Peacemaker over the side there. So that gets first blood straight away over to the Wolves. You see assist pretty much uh, across the board for three of them. And it's Twisted Fate that gets that first blood as well. It's going to make Alex's life a little bit harder. He actually started with boots there. And I think Eddie just didn't expect that the Wolves had left the base so much quicker than Gambit had and were already waiting in the brush on their side of the map. And, you know, we were already talking about the confidence being hit for Gambit. They just won that last game. It may well have given them a little bit of a boost, but the way they played certainly won't. And that sort of start... That can really put you on a tilt. A pink ward being used by Eddie in the back of the red buff there from Gambit. They are going for a four-man invade. We'll see where it turns out. Alexic is keeping himself present in that mid lane because all the super buffs, uh, all the buffs have spawned. They are going for that late invade because see Gambit going to the blue. Copenhagen Wolves are doing the exact same counter invade. Everybody's happy.
Interestingly enough, the Wolves did have a ward down there, so they're actually going to see that this is happening, and they can see that that 2v1 swap was happening as well. They saw Youngbuck recalling. He's going to be coming down now into this bottom lane to go up against Twitch and Nami. Top lane going to be Morgana and Caitlyn versus Darian on that Irelia when he gets there. Right now, he's uh, not too bothered about getting into his lane. He's not really missing much, obviously, in that 2v1 scenario. He's probably just going to tag along in the jungle for a while. You know, what's strange for me is in this situation, we've seen teams just shoving, shoving on down. We just saw Darian and Diamond taking everything away from the jungle of the Copenhagen Wars, yet they're not shoving these waves. Alliance have done it, Fnatic have done it, SK did it, Rockat did it. Why are Gambit and Wolves not doing it? I have no idea. Well, it's funny, really, because the Wolves were the team that were lane swapping yeah. when lane swapping wasn't really as popular earlier on here in the season. So it's kind of interesting to me that they decide not to go for that kind of scenario. As they come in here, Alex Hitch going to take a bit of damage. He'll be able to walk away, though. Yeah, didn't force the flash out of him. That's what they were trying to draw. They wanted to get one of their summoner spells away. Youngbuck simply buying himself time. He doesn't dare go down that bottom. Now we're seeing all four members of Dime, uh, Gambit going down towards it. They're going to take away the white. They're continuing that push on towards the top turret. Finally responding. Copenhagen Wolves doing the same thing. Four members heading up towards the top. We're finally going to see that push, but it's a little late on this one, but if both teams are doing the same thing, why not do it? Yeah, and actually Gambit here having to wait for that minion wave to come through to them. But as you said, four men here down on this bottom turret, four men up on the top side. We'll see who actually can take these down quicker. Mid lane, of course, they're just going to stick around and continue their farming path. We saw a bit of a disaster earlier on today where, you know, inhibitor turrets were taken during this push, which you should probably never really let happen. Not sure that that will go this far, but it'll be interesting to see how Gambit and the Wolves have reacted to this whole shift in the meta for this exact strategy. Yeah, well, of course, the bottom lane is a slightly weaker turret. And that's the one where you'd expect them to pile on through towards the inhibitor turret. You can see both teams, though, are taking down those turrets, both top and bottom. And it's actually the Wolves that are doing it slightly quicker right now, despite the fact with that Aurelia, of course, you would expect it to be them. They will take it down first. There you go. Genja takes the town turret down. Identical times. It is going to be young uh, Copenhagen Wolves that will blink first. They're going to back away. Gamera can keep pushing on this one, but it seems the moment they spotted the reaction, they're like, yeah, okay, let's do it. So both teams wisely playing this one this time around, and we'll back away. So that's the standard start that we've been, I think, expecting more than we've really seen, actually, today. You know, this this whole three- or four-man push going straight down to late on both sides of the map, becoming more and more popular as we go on. Now we get into the interesting part, though, because if we look down the CS totals after that, Darian got himself a good lead, and Amazing's actually coming in here on towards Alex Hitch. He's got a flash, and he's got a heal as well. Kautar gets the stun card and a wild card shot off there as well, but not really in any true danger there was Alex. He actually used his summoner heal fairly early on in that fight, which kind of surprised me. Don't think he really needed it, and now the Wolves are invading. He needed the, the speed that it offers you to yeah. get away from that one, of course, because amazing, he was one hit away. He got the three talent strike on there, and he would have done the knockoff, but of course, if it had stuck around, he would have also taken the Aqua Prism, which is why he backed away. Genja caught out by Darkbind in there. They're going to try and take away the Wraiths here, but Diamond's not having any of that one. Comes in, smites it away, makes sure he secures it. Interesting style of play from both these teams. Look at Copenhagen Wolves. Three members, four members stacking around that mid lane, trying to put some pressure on towards it. This is kind of normal play for the Wolves, and we'll see how Gambit react to it. Yeah, pushing uh, with the four men. Morgana was there as well, and they've got some good vision down Ooh. on the bottom side of the jungle as Genja going to get in there. Good damage onto Kaltard, but good damage, not quite enough damage at this stage of things. Looking at the AD carry builds, double Doran's blade and boots there on one side of things, and the Vamp Scepter for Forgiven. So he's going to have a nice little bit of sustain as he uh, gets himself back off into a bit of farm. But look at this. Look at what's building up. The difference at the moment for Given is holding that lane. He's 48, 49 CS and counting, 50 plus. Genja, only 23. Darian is doing the same thing, but this is going to be an Aurelia that's going to get farmed out there. Oh, Genja caught out. Oh, we're going to see Twisted Fate pining in, but look at that. Shockwave pulls him straight in. They pounce on towards him. Unlimited, he's the focus. Darian taking the turret damage. There will be a kill. It's Alex that gets it on Unlimited. That was a disastrous ultimate from Kautar. I don't really know why he chose to do that. He obviously, he used Come the ultimate on, there. We've all done it before. <laughs> well, I, yeah, that's why that was a perfect TF yeah, but he kind of done it, I'd, I'd imagine. But using his ultimate there, getting vision of the entire Gambit team, which 
then surprised me that he decided to go exactly there. Diamond came in straight behind him. That kill is, of course, now going to give uh, Gambit the Dragon. So first one of the game going their way. It puts them just 100 gold into the lead, but they'll take any lead at this point. This is what surprises me. 100% balls to the wall. Kautar needs the large rod. First item back. We'll see whether that develops into anything, whether it goes towards the Rabadon's death cap. But that is very ballsy as a first item. Alex, it's going stand. Chalice is in there. It's going to go towards that Athene's Unholy Grail. Eddie, he's looking to land another one of those Aqua Prisons that started and turned that fight on its head. So far, Gamut are keeping even with Copenhagen Wolves, despite all the lane swapping shenanigans that's been going on. It is 2-2 in turrets. In terms of farm, you can see it's Darian that's ahead of Young, but big advantage for him. And getting that Aurelia going could be a big part of Gamut's play. Yeah, 37 to 13 CS. That is a pretty impressive total right now, but not quite as impressive as if we look at Genja and Forgiven. 76 to 23 CS there. Forgiven once again just freezing that lane as far up as he could towards his own inner turret there. And that's giving him, if you look at the gold, a thousand gold difference between the two AD carries at this stage of the game. Dangerous for Genja going forward. He's going to get a big wave of farm here, but look at the levels. Forgiven is level 7. Genja is only just ding 5. Yeah, that is a giant gigantic differential in this way if he goes back and buys he's only got the vampire exception yet so he hasn't used that power that money that he's got there it does mean the Copenhagen Wolves are going to keep pressure on towards his bottom turret but they've got to be careful they don't stick around too long Alex is just going towards the top wave here Youngbuck has got a ward in that tribe but he's wisely backing away from this one this may be a turret gain for Gambit though no nope, they're going to choose to farm between the towers Youngbuck can literally do nothing here level 6 Darian level 3 Youngbuck Level 7, Alexic. He can't even think about sticking around from that one. So, so far behind at this stage. 49 to 14 CS. See Diamond here going to be soaking up a bit of experience and making sure that turret stays alive. Actually amazing. Going to go charging in onto Darren here. They're trying to keep hold of that turret. But the shockwave comes down. Good flash from Amazing. Yeah, forces the flash out of Amazing. Tower goes down. Advantage picked up by Gambit. Currently, though, bottom lane now continuing to keep that pressure down. Keep trying to shove that tower in. Alexic doing a good job of mopping up the differences in that mid lane, keeping Kaltide away. Forgiven, keeping that pressure on towards him. Keeps on hammering down, getting some damage on towards that turret. The Dark Bindings are not landing, though. Eddie's still only level four as well. Them Aqua Prisons, they have to land. They could turn it around, but Genja now with level six has got that spray and pray available. So it is a little bit more dangerous for the Copenhagen Wolves. They may start backing off. From there is though, I think that Gambit are a little bit too afraid of going out there. I mean, giving a kill to Forgiven now while he's got this huge CS lead would just compound the pain, really, that Genja and Edward are finding themselves in on that lane. I think Alex is going to be key to getting something going on that side of the map. Darian maybe as well, once his teleport actually comes off cooldown. That's uh, currently got about a quarter of its time remaining. Diamond is also headed towards this bottom side. And look at Darian, he's actually walking to that bottom lane. Amazing will be there as well, though. Yeah, remember there's no towers to fall back on for the Copenhagen Walls here. So a four-man pile on in this bottom lane could be vital, but that's going to start things off. Dark Binding catches on Genja, does manage to get stealth up here. It's going to be a three and three. They don't know Amazing there. He's going to pile on through. Now we're going to see Twisted Fate joining the party it's Genja they want to focus on diamonds taken very low from this one but Darian he's gonna stop them in the tracks I think that's a perfect example of how these two teams are reading each other so well right now it's 2v2 all of a sudden it's 4v4 they know exactly what's gonna be happening and where and that's probably why we're seeing such close games and reason why these two teams are rather afraid of each other and making bad decisions or making decisions that they aren't sure about because they figure that the Wolves have got Gambit's game and vice versa. Some damage there onto that mid turret. Kaltar, of course, had to walk himself back up. Alex introduced that time to get the farm train going. Actually, it's going to be 30 CS in the lead. So, Alex doing well there. Yeah, every time Kaltar steps away from this wave, nice lane, Alex is just going to keep the pressure on that turret. And with simply that easily large rod, he's not got a lot of health. Alex is so exhausted on the tower hits. And that's what kept Kaltar alive because he would have gone down. Alex had the flash and heal. Could have pulled the trigger on that one. Could have. Was very close, actually. Those turret hits causing him a bit of pain. And in the end, 
won't matter too much if you're uh, going to get away from it using neither the heal nor the flash. Just want to point out the Rabadon's Death Cup done there for Kautard. So he's going to have a lot more damage now coming into things. Also have to comment on the fact that Youngbuck has managed to gain that CS deficit back. He's almost pulled even now with Darien. So that advantage that Darien had up there is now gone. Same sadly for the Wolves. Uh, sorry, for Gambit can't be said about the AD carries. 67 to 119 CS. We can see that Genja struggling to buy anything. No Vamp Scepter, no PF Sword right now. The Given got both of them in there already. They're going to pressure this turret out once again. It's a good Black Shield. And Forgiven can just harass constantly. He's got a level over Genja. He's three levels above Edward. Yeah, Genja desperately wants to go back and buy. He's sitting on 1,800 gold right now. And they were to dive oh. in towards this one. Eddie's in trouble. Oh, a failed jump as well. Coming out from Diamond. A calamity of errors. And that's going to give the Copenhagen Wolves a simple turret. Not the best execution there, I think, from Gami. I give Forgiven... Uh, the props to that one though, combo in his entire kit to get that kill off. Diamond here is going to have to smite away that golem, but they need to react to this one because the Wolves have got a good amount of pushing power with Amazing and Forgiven and Unlimited there to offer some crowd control should they need it. You see how quickly that turret is going to be going down. Next wave of minions is coming as well, and I think they can have this one away before Genja and Edward start to come across, or do they want Diamond? He's going to take a lot of damage. Flash over the wall from Youngbuck. Room Prison comes in. Flash from Diamond, but he's headed into the enemy side of the jungle. The reinforcements of Alex and Darian coming across. We'll see if they continue that fight there. Yes, it's dangerous stuff. There's going to be the wave coming out. Forgiven out to flash away. Spray and Prey coming out from Genja. Does not catch on Copenhagen Wolves. Gambit are coming in from three different directions right now. Diamond is actually very low. He can't get involved in this one. He's the man with smite, which is not available. He's just used it on the wolves. Gambit is simply running interference here. Copenhagen wolves. Kautard flashes for that. Tries to get the stun card down. But Gambit, they're running rings. They're keeping them occupied because they simply can't fight for the dragon. So they don't want to let the Copenhagen wolves do the same. Needed a bit of Benny Hill music running to that <laughs> fight. I think there were flashes left and right, and in the end, no real damage being done. We saw Genja's pray and spray, uh, spray and pray. Well, maybe he was praying. Yeah, spray and pray. That's it. I always get him backwards for some reason. I don't know. It's late. That's my excuse. Okay. So here we go. Scrying orb. Actually, Scrying orb. didn't yeah. notice that uh, Edward had actually picked that up till we see it coming in. But Dragon didn't get started off either. So that objective is still to be fought over. And you can see that Darian is still hanging around. Diamond going to get himself a red buff here before they set up for things. Be interested to see if Gambit move for it, if they see the wolves starting to back away. And they've still got a ward off to the side there as well. So they're going to see the positioning of the Copenhagen wolves. Same applies from the other side though. There's two wards in river outside Dragon Pit. So Rabadon's death cap completed as that first item for counter. He's leaving him low on man. You can see he's lacking that regen. He is 50 CS behind Alex Hitch as well, who while that was all happening, pretty much stuck around the mid lane, kept the pressure, kept the farm on, didn't really feel he's needed. But honestly, as an Orianna, he has to do that. He has to keep farming. He has to get himself up there. Level up for the dragon. We just saw that because everybody on the map is gaining those levels. It keeps the dragon's level going up and keeps his gold on ticking upwards. So. As it stands, we, Genja has finally backed off. He's finally got himself some items. It is a BF sword along with those boots, but a bloodthirst you can see already completed. Gamut though, they're starting off the dragon and well, Copenhagen Wolves are a little bit out of position. I don't think they can contest it. No, Unlimited is going to try and run some interference here, but they won't be able to get close to it. That is a good pickup here. It's the second dragon of the game going over towards Gambit here. As Twisted Fate going to pop his ultimate. Amazing diving in there. Is Twisted Fate off to the side. Gets the stun down onto Alex Hitch. They're going to root prison him, but they've turned it around. Young Monk's going to fall. Tidal wave goes through. Blocked by the Black Shield, but they've got the slow on to Forgiven. He's got no flash. He's oh. got a heal. That's a great dark binding coming out of Unlimited to stop the chase. That Aqua Prism was so so close to catching Forgiven. That would have been a very dead AD carry and that could have turned this game on its head. There's a gigantic minion wave in the bottom. There's a big minion wave in the top, both for Gambit. And that is what's causing problems. The Copenhagen Wolves, they have to deal with it. They've been caught napping for a while. We do see Kauta going up there, throwing out those wild cards, but it has given time for Gambit to push his midway. This is basically gifted Gambit his middle turret. Five of them there, only four, actually only three from the walls because Youngbuck went to push that bottom lane out as well. And that will be the outer turret now going down. The final outer turret on the map here. So Gambit have got that portion of the game now under control. 
waiting to see how deep they go with the wards because that's the way that Gamut, traditionally at least, I can't really say the same for these last two games, have strangled <laughs> their opponents out of things. And that's why they can also finish off these games so quickly when they get in the lead because they keep a control over the entire map, they keep vision over the entire map and you can't really do anything when you fall into that position. I think one thing's becoming very apparent though, that Gambit have a much stronger team fight comp right now and are far more confident with it. Of course, Darian and Diamond, they could both pounce in, they're gonna have the defensive ball of Alex and potentially the Shockwave will follow. Don't forget though, Copenhagen Wars, they can lock you up. They've got the Dark Binding, the Rune Prison in there. So if they go too deep, they could get caught out. And if the burst damage from Forgiven and Kautard is landing, along with Amazing trying to run interference, then yes, they could pick a target. But so far, it seems to be Gambit that are feeling very confident. And if, if anyone gets locked up, if that Shockwave trigger gets pulled, along with the Spray and Pray, Copenhagen Wars are just going to get massacred. Yeah, the Wolves have got a pretty nice comp for Gambit running in there and you now trying to get into their faces with a dark bind in there with room prison. Sinchao can knock them all back, Kautar can stun them up. Forgiven can throw his net their way. The problem that they have with that is that Diamond is obviously going to stealth with the ball, jump yeah. straight into the middle of them. And if Alex, hit, uh, Alex hits the trigger at the right time, Wolves are going to lose so much health before they can even do anything about it. This turret here is going to go down shortly. I can't see Gambit holding on to, uh, to it for too much longer. As we see another scrying orb coming out there for Edward. That's only going to spot Amazing and I think warn them a little bit of the impending Tower Doom that's surely going to happen soon. Yeah, I think Genja's going to have to head off to the side, though. He's got a big wave in the top pushing in. Young Muk's doing a good job at shoving that wave along, so somebody will have to deal with that one. I think it's going to be Darian. Looks like he's heading on down there to keep him at bay. Taking a quick look at the CS, Darian, of course, had that big advantage where he was left on his own, but Young Muk pulled it back. He's now actually ahead in terms of CS. There is the middle turret finally topping. It is going to be forgiven that take it down. 4-4 four, four in terms of turrets. But big advantage still held by Forgiven. 50 CS gap as well by the mid laner as well. Darian using his ultimate to keep them at bay here. Copenhagen Wars are collapsing on this one. Gambit are not responding quick enough. Gambit were far too slow to react to this one. Actually, Unlimited is going to come around the side. Dark Binding catches the minion before it can land onto Edward. And that is a nice pickup. Turret number five for the Copenhagen Wolves. Diamond stealing the blue buff here from the Wolves' jungle. Nice pickup for him. And he's probably just going to want to recall or run completely the opposite direction here. Yeah, he decides he's gonna recall from that one. So only the inner ring of turrets now gonna be up for Gambit. And again, I go back to this vision point. We see that Diamond, uh, like Gambit and Diamond in particular, got some vision on the top side of the map, but they've got no real control over the Wolves' side of the map at the moment. I hate to say it, Joe, but I feel this game is suddenly gonna go very passive. It's in this situation where both teams, the audience physically groans on that one. <laughs> Red buff will be stolen away. The Wolves are going to go for that one. But I feel that both of these teams are unsure of themselves now. And you can see Genja's actually getting a good split push farm going on at the moment. He's going to gain himself up there. But that's what he needs to do. He now needs to farm. He's realized the situation to get into the next team fight as these teams start to build that power spikes up. He needs to be strong, and he's not right now, so Gambit needs to slow the game down. Copenhagen Wolves, well, they're going to try and look at creating an opportunity, but Gambit has such good wave clear when they're in the right place, it's going to slow them down, and Copenhagen Wolves, well, we know they are not that confident. They will not dive into those towers, so we could have a potential slowdown in this game. Well, it can't be slower than the last game because it would be going backwards <laughs> uh, if sure. that were the case. It's actually a lot quicker than the last game already. This is five true. four in turrets. It took it took 40 minutes before the third turret went down for Copenhagen Wolves. But this is we're on to that point where it's actually difficult, more difficult to get in there, and they've got to go a little bit deeper to get that vision down. You see on the bottom side of Gambit's jungle, there's a ring of wards there by the walls, and now Diamond and Darian going to go in towards Youngbook. They don't want to dive in, they didn't have vision on the rest of the team. Funnily enough, they were really nowhere around. Youngbuck had already used his flash, probably could have got that kill if they'd have gone a little bit deeper. As it happens, the Wolves are all moving up towards his top side and they're just going to clear out that wave. Gambit start to back away. Interestingly enough, 15 seconds for Dragon, 
Neither of the teams particularly in position for that one, but you can see that Edward has just thrown out all his ward allowance on the bottom side of the map here. They want full vision control of that side of the map and get this next objective. Counter, no, not in trouble. Force the flash away from him, just simply using the blade surge. All they're doing is protecting that bottom half. You can see Genji down there, he's farming it out with that blade surge, with that flash from Kaltard. Gambit are going to move into position for this dragon. The Copenhagen Wolves are looking to maybe react. No. Well, Youngbook's away. He could teleport in here, but that's dangerous, dangerous play. And we know that the Copenhagen Wolves are not one to go too dangerous. Amazing fans, is it? Looking to see if he can get into a smite. No, it's clear for Gambit. Good pick up once again, Dragon number Ooh. three going over. Actually amazing here going deep. Will the shockwave come out? No, they decide against it. Kaltan trying to get in there to the front as well. Only catching the wild cards though onto Alexic, but it looks like a positional play here for the Wolves. Gambit going to try and cut them off at that inner tower. Yeah, they're going to try and drive on through there. They have the pink ward down. Youngwood's going to clear the vision of that one. It buys them time, and the Gambit have to rotate around. Remember, though, spray and pray from the side would be deadly for the Copenhagen Wolves, and they realize that. They realize the danger, and they back away. I feel like you'll be saying that a few more times. Yeah. As we go on in this one, Gambit actually chasing up to that top side of the map. Finally, the Wolves are going to be getting some wards down there on that one. Blue Buff has spawned in. Obviously, they want Alex Itch to get his hands on that one. Kaltard's going to try a sneaky steal. Got full vision of it. Is he going to be able to pull it off? No, a little bit too early there. Alex Itch gets it. Diamond actually getting black uh, dark binding in there as well. Does get the heal though. and Not really too much danger in the Wolves are already on the back foot. So, bottom wave is pushed in. Gendry had worked on that one, so somebody will have to go deal with that one. It looks like it's going to be Kaltard. That takes him away from the map for a while. Has got Destiny to try and get back in here, but Gambit are pushing straight in. Amazing has to smite out that red buff to secure it, but the rest of Gambit, they've got a bit of positional advantage here on this top wave. Could try and push it through instead. Seems they're happy to back away. Destiny used. It gives them the advantage. Alex is going to be the focus target, but look at that. The Shockwave pulls him straight in. Doesn't do much damage, though. No, didn't really do a lot, and that could be a little bit worrying for them, considering that's Death Cap, Athene's Unholy Grail on Alex Hitch. The other side, the Void Staff with the Rabadon's Death Cap for Kaltar. It felt like he was doing more damage than what we saw there out of Alex Hitch. See how that one builds up. It's, it's his crowd control as well, if it lands correctly, of course, in a big team fight that makes him so, so very powerful. Want to touch on the AD carries again? slightly decrease that gap, but Forgiven's really been keeping up the 40 or 50 CS lead that he's got. Actually, the mid lane is where the real difference now is 70 CS that Alex Itch has over Kaltard. Yeah, and you can see Genji, he's off free farming once again in the top lane. It's actually Kaltard just realized he needs to get some of that farm, so Forgiven sticking around the mid lane, and they continue their farming prey. But uh, Genji, well, if he gets strong, if he gets in the right position, we know that spray and pray can do work. Darian, though, he is someone I feel they should be fearful of. Youngbook, of course, is stacking out that tier. Let's not forget that. He's got that Rod of Ages in as well, but he's had the Trinity Force for a while now, Darian. Now we'll see where he goes, whether he goes tanky, whether he is going to be that front man, that man that dives in. But the reason I talk about Darian, it's 25 minutes in, he has not died yet. That is a big thing, because when that happens, Gambit generally go on to play very well. Yeah, it's, it's like an omen, really, coming out of Darien, if that works out for him. Diamond here, going to be chased down, but he's, of course, got his leap, so not a problem, really, on that front. Are they going to keep chasing around? Darien is waiting. They're going to throw the ace in the hole on towards Diamond, but look at Darien. He's managed to catch out Kaltard here. That is a lot of damage. Can't stick around to finish it off, though. The rest of the team from the Copenhagen Wolves are now chasing Diamond. The question is, can Gambit get in position and fight for this one? He dives to the back. It was a costly mistake, though. Forgiven gets that kill, and now they turn around on towards Alex Hitch. Good damage from Forgiven. They're actually having Darien now on the bottom side of them, having a good go. Unlimited's going down, or is he the shockwave? Was missed, and his ultimate goes off. Stuns up Darien. Gambit gonna keep chasing. Dark Binding puts a stop to it. They could not catch them, and good lord. Kautar taken so, so low. Baited in there, really, honestly, Diamond. They were expecting it, they knew it was coming, and the moment he went in there, everybody quickly piled on towards that cast. Didn't even get a chance to really try and submit, uh, mitigate some of that damage with that ultimate. And the Copenhagen Wolves get a kill, and that's going to put doubt once again into Gamit's mind. We saw how strong Darien was, though, in that fight. We saw him. Once he got on Kaltard, Kaltard got destroyed, almost taken down. Then he jumped on towards Unlimited, who also got absolutely hurt. So Darien 
is becoming a danger. Amazing didn't really want that fight, didn't pull the trigger, was just going purely defensive, didn't dive in like we saw him in the last game. He was the man that went first in when that team fight went pear-shaped in the last game. This time, maybe that's put doubt in his mind, who knows. Feral Flare is completed by him. He picked that up a long time ago, so Amazing's damage will continue to grow, and he is starting to once again go tanky. Worrying thing for Gambit, we've not seen a convincing shockwave just yet in this game. As Darren is going to have Twisted Fate coming into him, Youngmuk's going to be able to room prison him up. They've not got enough damage, he's still too tanky, and that's with just that giant spell and Ruby Crystal in there. The problem is he'd gone a minion wave, and so as soon as he started pulling that ultimate out, he was only ever going to be re regenerating health, and he's very hard to lock down. Once he's out of the room prison range of Youngbook, he would either going to have to flash for it and fully commit for it, Meanwhile, of course, the rest of the team were rotating up there. Genja got himself that Phantom Dancer now needs to pick up the last Whisper. We can see that there was the second item that Forgiven went for, who himself has two kills. But the terms of farm you were talking about earlier on, the gap is closing. Genja is closing in once again on Forgiven. 204 to 249. So we'll see if that one continues to develop. As you mentioned, last Whisper is going to become crucial to him as things move along. There's a 100 CS difference now appeared uh, in the mid lane, was 70 last time we checked on it. So Alex must be sitting on a decent amount of gold, I think around about yeah, 2K uh, to spend on that one. So he's gonna become more powerful when they go back, but Dragon's coming up, so now's not the time to back off. No, he's not. He's gonna be coming back in though with a uh, blasting one. Rabidon's death cap was completed. Home guards picked up, of course, with those Mercury treads. So he's gonna be happy about that one. Darian was pushing in that bottom wave, so that's going to become a problem. And Copenhagen Wolves are trying to bully out a position here, but I'm not too sure they're very confident about it right now. Gambit are split up, divided. They're going to pounce in and go, go in. Diamond taking so, so much damage early on. Stealth up, gets out of there. Ace in the hole is going to be blocked off by Darian. They turn it back around. Amazing. Jumps on towards Genja. Genja taking damage here. He's actually taking it out, but the spray and break comes out. He's going to be laying down all of that hurt on towards him. It's a double for Alex in chain. The limit is going to get taken down. There's the triple. Genja chases on it. The slow goes down, forgiving it all sorts of trouble. He's going to get caught out. Genja picks it up. It's a four for zero. Diamond did exactly like Insect was doing at Katowice. Jumped in, took all of the abilities, and pounced out stealth. Still managed to get himself away from that one. It was a big shockwave from Alexic that really helped them in this. Kowtow had to flash away from the fight, could only really utilize one um, of those wild cards coming out. Genja, spray and pray, absolutely amazing. And you saw the Wolves, they were fighting, fighting, fighting. Then they realized, oh my God, we're actually losing out very quickly here. Trying to back away, but hard to get away from a team like this that have got dashes and jumps and speed boosts and all that kind of stuff. Very, very well played by Gambit. 6-3, it's a 4,000 gold lead that they now hold. Definitely not a massive gold lead, but that might be the swing that they were looking for to you know, really turn this game in their favor. I mentioned it before that we've not seen that decisive winning Gambit team that we've been so used to in the past so far in this best of three. Yeah, and the irony is in that fight that obviously Copenhagen Wolves have got to be careful they don't get caught in a pit like the Baron or the Dragon pit, but they actually funneled themselves in that little corridor by the blue buff. That's where the spray and play was landing. He, he didn't have to turn, he didn't have to change. He just had to sit in that one direction. They all lined up for him. It was very easy stuff. And Alex is, of course, once he lands that attack dissonance on towards him, managed to get the kill. Diamond caught out, Dark Binding in there. Does manage to jump away from that one. Ace in the hole also used out. Puts a big dent of damage in Diamond. He's going to back away from this one. Will Copenhagen Wolves push, try and push on towards his tower? There is Wicked down the bottom lane. Uh, sorry, not Wicked, it's Darian. <laughs> so used to seeing Aurelia. It is Darian down the bottom lane. And in the top lane was Genja. Genja's rotated back down here. They may try and create a play. Look how aggressive Genja is being on Twitch. That could come back and haunt him a little bit later if he's not careful. But so far, playing a model game. 2-0-4 is Genja. See, that Youngbuck is now pushing out his bottom wave. It's right. It's going to take him a while to really start to push through things. But it might force Gambit to actually react here a little. Diamond was just getting the creeps out of the top side of his jungle. And the Wolves going to send this four-man team straight back down the mid lane. Two men there to defend. Make that three with Alex Hitch as well. They'll clear out these waves like nobody's business. And they're struggling to find that opening. What I'm interested in now is Darian versus Youngbuck. And who's stronger from the two of them? Darian not really wanting to engage in that one. Youngbuck did use his ultimate. Darian is still 
really not building too much magic defense. He doesn't really care much about Young Wook, but we shouldn't be surprised about that one. It is Darian after all. And they even said he was fairly, I would say, fairly aggressive against Young Wook, saying he did, doubted his abilities, doubted his skills. In the opening video, we saw him just saying he didn't fear whatever Young Wook had to bring to the table. Genji, in the meanwhile, he's continuing to keep that farm. That gap is ever so slightly small uh, again. But don't forget, he got two kills and four assists this time around. Alexic, gigantic stack of gold. 130 CS now ahead of his counterpart. And it equates, look at that. Well, three and a half thousand gold difference between him and Kaltard. That is gigantic. It was a big gamble for Kaltard, and I'm not convinced by it so far. He picked it into this lane. He knew what was he doing. It was the final choice. But so far, he's had no impact on the game. Yeah, I mean, the, the great thing about Twisted Fate with his destiny is that you can impact other lanes so very quickly. And to be honest, in the earlier stages of the game, didn't really do that. His single kill, of course, was the first blood where Edward face-checked them and he managed to pull the right card at the right time and they locked him up with all the CC that they had at that early level. Since then, not been all that impressed with him. Obviously, he's going to be doing more and more damage as uh, things go on, but pretty mobile. He's, Ooh, you know, a little bit... Oh, he's going to dive away. He's no, not quite enough. He got his ultimate run in there and taking the less damage from that one. Are they going to start off Baron? Forcing oh, the flash. Flash from Amazing. Yeah, very well done. Forced the flash out of Amazing. Actually started the Baron to attack him as well. It's like, I don't need to do the damage on towards you. I'm going to let the Baron do it for me. However, we did see Diamond going very low. He needs to back away. He's actually low on health. And Copenhagen Wolves are taking positional advantage here, but Gambi don't care, they're going to run in. Look at that, Genja, stealth bomber coming in there, using that shockwave, gets on towards Forgiven, Forgiven taken down, Edward actually picked up the kill there. Exhaust comes out from Young, but he's going to have to run away from this one, he's going to try and catch on towards Darian, Darian, oh, he's catching everything being thrown at him right now. He will get a surge on towards it, Flash Aqua Prison comes in, Darian goes on towards Young, but gets the stun down, is it enough? The slow comes out from Genja, it's another kill for Alex Itch, and that is a 2-4-0. Kautar got away with next to nothing. Gambit to turn in for Baron. Straight in towards Baron here, picking up those kills. And I think they're healthy enough to not really have too much of a problem with this one. We see there's a big wave up top there as well. So they can push straight towards that top side after they get this. And Diamond, who's just waiting off to the side, seeing if anyone tries to challenge him on this one, and he's going to be the one to dive in. Alex Hitch is there, not binding, actually connecting there onto Diamond, but they're keeping Morgana away. Zinchao's going to come around. We've got Kautar on the top side who's clearing out the wave here. I think this Baron's going to go down without a single attempt from the Wolves to get in there. Good pick up from Gambit. So, big advantage picked up for Gambit now. They've taken every single Dragon and now the Baron. This is a big turnaround. Gambit going to start feeling a lot more confident, and that's a problem for the Copenhagen Wolves. They were the ones that tried to initiate on that fight. They were the ones that were pushing down the mid lane, and it backfired on them horribly. We talked about it earlier. A twitch coming out of the side will get you in a nice line, a rate of fire. Forgiven totally out of position. He was the one that was actually trying to hit the turret. He was the one that was pushing forward with his team. The rest of the team stepped away. He was caught in the offside trap, effectively, if it was football, and completely caught out of position. Taken down. Could not solo a twitch right now. And that was proven in that fight because. Look what he's got. He's got an Infinity Edge and a Bloodthirster along with a Phantom Dancer. Doesn't give a monkeys about that last whisper once again because the only person with armor so far is amazing. And that's not going to be his focus target. Yeah, and the interesting thing is how they actually started that fight. Your AD carry, really, that's the one that you sent into the middle of the team. As Darian is, by the way, 007 style point. James that Bond, one. yeah, on that top lane right now. And. It's actually an Aurelia that's worked out well for him this time around. Hasn't really been pressured and is able to get farm. And you can see it was him that started. He, he was the one that jumped in. He's throwing himself into these fights. And of course, nobody's focusing him. But with the Trinity Force, he actually does a lot of damage. And once he can get that ultimate running, he's starting to nail them. So Gambit pushing the lanes. Top wave being pushed 1v1. Gambit is Darian versus Youngbuck. Meanwhile, this mid lane. That turret has not got many hits in it. This mid lane is though, you can see Gamma going to push them towards it. They are going to keep the waves clear because they have just about enough right now. Those wild cards flung out from Kaltard can take those minions down. Followed by the pulse over is just about enough to keep Gamut off the turret. But Gamut, I feel they just need to rotate around. That's exactly what they're doing. You're going to see Genja. Oh, jumping on towards him. Genja's going to get ace in the hole. And wow. 
he was dropped quick. Yeah, caught out of position. That's the other great thing about Twisted Fate. As Darian here, life stealing from everyone. Will he be able to get away? They've got vision of him inside of that brush. And there is a rune prison. That's going to mean the death of him, or is it? Oh. He gets the big heal from Edward. And now they're going to turn it around. Shockwave will pull in amazing. They can keep pushing on this one as well. Youngbuck using his shield there from the Zerves. He's going to fall anyway. And that is a two for one. Yes, Genji got caught out. But given that, they're a little bit too close to Diamond. They're going to keep chasing on this one. Oh, Alex wow. comes on the side, blows half of his health away. He's going to take the turret. Hit oh, he doesn't three. give a monkey's <laughs> about the turret. He's going for kills here. Goes on to Kautan. One more hit will do it. And there is Alex Hitch now legendary. Unlimited tries to lock them up, but a dive in from the back will give Alex Hitch another double kill there. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Gambit absolutely running wild there. All seeding from Genja getting caught out. He was completely obliterated there, but Gambit, Alex is running past the tower. He could have just thrown in a basic attack as he was running by, would have taken the turret down, but he was focused. All he wanted was kills. 9-0-4, Alex is right now on Oriana. We were talking about how he can be passive on it, but by God, where has he pulled this score from? I don't know, he's doing fantastic work for him. Darian seemingly the unkillable once again. Everything was thrown at him. The kitchen sink involved, but Eddie came to the rescue and saved him. He's not James Bond anymore, not 007, he's 009. He is advanced and he is continuing to grow stronger. That Mikhail's Crucible from Edward was crucial in keeping him alive and really turned that fight on his head. Such an incredible team fight. Look at his CS there as well. So, so far ahead. I mean, that doesn't really matter when you look at his score, to be fair, at this stage. I think it was about 6,000 gold that he was above Kautar on. If you look at the teams as a whole, it's jumped significantly in the recent time. 13 and a half thousand gold is what separates them. Ooh. Now Genja's going to have a look for Youngbuck. He's invisible and he's going to take a while to get out there, but he does finally do it. But Genja might get caught out of this one. Wild cards come through. He's going to go down, but Darian wants two kills from this. Here's the rest oh. of the wolves, though. Darian's got a GA, so he's got two lives to stay alive. And, well, he doesn't get killed. Two GAs, I should now mention, on Gambit, because Diamond picked one up as well. It's going to be so hard for the wolves to come back. I never seen Genja being that aggressive before. He knew that Darian was going to be joining him, but he surely knew that Destiny was available for Kautar, and the moment he joins that fight, it takes him down. Genja seemingly found a new... new what? <laughs> a new lease of life is what I was after uh, on this Twitch. Suddenly going aggressive, and I think it suits him, but he's going a little bit too aggressive so far. A little bit too ham at the moment. I think he went in there, realized that Youngbuck was there, and was like, I don't really want to fight this, I'm going to run away. And then realize, okay, my self's running out in a second, so I gotta fight better this just fight. Just gonna hit my ulti and pray. Well, it worked out for him. Forgiven was taken low, I think, by the super minions. Actually, I'm not too sure. I didn't see what took him quite down so low. Nobody's anywhere near it from Gambit, so it must have been the minions that was doing all the work to him, which is a bit of a problem in that top lane. Lich Bane being picked up by Alex Itch. Alex Itch, I want to take a peek at him, actually, because he must have a lot of here. 721 ability power. That is a very, very dangerous Orianna right now. Yeah, and we've seen that. I mean, 904 tells the perfect story from that one. See, like, Forgiven, he has just gone for a Zephyr here as fourth item, taking a bit of a leap out of Genja's pockets. Genja is going to get in there. Good damage, Ace in the hole will come through, but not really that much damage to it. His lifesteal, what was left anyway. Gambit here on that turret. They can use Alex Hitch's ball as the only zoning tool. Not sure that's what your AD carry normally would do. Stand on the trap under the tower, take the damage. But you see that Darian and the rest of Gambit just absolutely hammering through these turrets. The Wolves know that they're going to start losing their base. They're probably up for a fight at some point soon. Yeah, 40 minutes gone in this game. Gambit looking much more aggressive, much more confident in their play as we start moving into a very late game. The Copenhagen Wolves are used to this territory, but they're going to have to defend out smartly. The Baron is up in 20 seconds time, will be the target. Gambit are already moving towards it. I am not 100% convinced the Copenhagen Wolves are going to try and get in there. They want to try and get a ward, though, and you can see Gambit setting the trap. Oh, the Wolves going to face check this one. I don't think they will, but I'm not sure what exactly they can do 
in response. Maybe popping that destiny, which is a great use of Kautar's ultimate here, even if he doesn't take the teleport side of it. There is the destiny use. So they know that they're doing the Baron. And we see Wolves coming in and Gambit actually backing off here. Well, they're still not 100% percent convinced. Youngbook, of course, if he catches him in there, could do a hell of a lot of damage. It buys Kautar the time. Use that Destiny to push down and towards that middle turret. And now Gavin going back in once again. As soon as the Vision Wars go in there, they get cleared straight out of the pit, taking away any presence that they have. And well, that Baron is down to 4,000 hit points. Diamond jumps in there. The uh, Shockwave did not really do a great deal. Amazing's going back on towards Genjo. Genjo just life steals the door back. Wildcard comes flashing through, but still not enough damage. Diamond tanks out the damage in towards the Alexic gets himself the 10th kill of the game. Super Minions pushing on towards the inhibitor in the top, but they don't care about that one. It's a double kill for Genjo onto Forgiven. The AD carries down. I think Gamma can push for the win. And Killing Genja was the only hope, I think, in that fight. We saw how low he went. We saw how quickly he just regened it all straight back up with a lifesteal that he's got. Gambit are going to take the second inhibitor here. The inhibitor in the top lane was finished off by the minions there. And it's going to be all on to Youngbuck and Kautard to see if they can hold this one out. Gambit, I was about to say, could finish here. I'm glad I didn't, though, because they're not going to. They're going to go back because the Baron wasn't taken down in the midst of all that. Oh, Gambit. Gambit, Gambit, Gambit. They're going to keep us going. It is going to be a Baron picked up for Gambit. No doubt about that one. That's, a, that's an enemy easy Baron. The uh, Copenhagen Wall is not going to be able to contest this one. Although, saying that, they are still fairly close by. We may even see Alex diving in towards Kautard here, catching on towards him. The ball is not going to be used. Youngbook's going to come around. Genja's going in as the Stealth Assassin. Let's see if he can get on towards Youngbook. Look at that. Speed up on towards him. Talisman used. They're going to chase down Youngbook here. They don't have vision in towards this area, but once they get the slowdown, it's going to be enough damage coming on towards him. Youngbook does back away. Had to use that ultimate to get the speed boost. Oh, a little bit anticlimactic there. I expect Genja again to be uh, dive straight in there, get the ball up on top of him. Gambit going to take themselves here another dragon. Don't have their entire team with them right now. Darian did just go home. He's now added a thorn mail in to that guardian angel Randuin's and the Trinity Force. So good damage. A lot of armor in there. Very, very tanky. And we've already seen that it's, it's difficult to kill him. He's 0, zero 12. I'd love for us that guy to actually tell me the last time that Darian didn't die and the last time that he got a that many assists, actually. Well, well I can tell you 44 minutes into this game. Genja just picked up a last whisper. He's managed to get that item again. It's looking good for him. Banshee's Veil, I think, may well be the next item as well. He's got that uh, spectral cowl on him. So, what do we make of this one, Joe? Gamut are in full control. A 17,000 gold advantage. Baron on. Copenhagen Wolves, they are on their last stand right now. And Gamut just have to group up, you feel, and shove on down. But they are doing this by the book. They want to take all three inhibitors down and make sure this game is done, a done deal. And you can't really blame them at this point. Going for anything risky is risking your livelihood at this stage because they lose here. They're, of course, going to play in summer promotion. Not somewhere you expect to see Gambit. Certainly wouldn't have expected them maybe even to be in this year game. If you'd have, uh, if someone had said that at the start of the season, you might have had a bit of a chuckle to yourself. But we see them now moving in finally on that last inhibitor. It's going to go down. The Wolves can't do much. The problem is that at some point, the Wolves are going to have to fight. Oh, but they can't really fight. They're too far behind as they dive in. Whoa, exploded Kaltar there. Blade Surge on the minion. Amazing going to get caught out. It's a double kill for Alexic. Unlimited going to get caught down. Edward steals that kill away. We're not going to see a Penta this time around, unfortunately. Alexic does get the triple. And that means that the Copenhagen Wolves are forced down to the summer promotion. But more importantly for Gambit, they have made it through to the summer LCS split. And that is a big, important step for Gambit as a team, as the players. They will be delighted that one. Diamond throws down the headset, happy to be back in the LCS. And that was far too close for Gambit's comfort. You can see how relieved more than anything they are after picking up that victory. They'll not be happy how things have gone here in playoffs, but they've they've made it, and that's what's important. They're gonna be going to the summer split there. You can see it. Happy, happy, happy diamond after that one. And I have to say, by the way, Darian went underneath the 
fountain right at the end. Big, big starts from him. He went underneath the fountain, that was the only death. He would have been 0 0 17 on Aurelia. Diamond 1 1 15. Alexic 13 0 8. Involved in every single kill at that uh, Gambit pulled there. 21 kills. He had a part in every single one of those. Big, big plays by Alexic in that final game. He has been underperforming, I feel, in this playoff split, but when it counted, you could rely on your captain in the mid. And that's what you've always got to rely on when it comes to those big moments that your big players are going to carry you on through. Wasn't that impressed with his zigs in the first couple of games, but this was another level uh, when it came to picking up Ariana. Darian, I think, is such an important part of that one. We've seen him so often when he falls. It's, he falls into what seems like a bad frame of mind like okay this game is already over don't really care anymore just gonna dive in there just to see how much damage i can do before i actually end up dying that darian wasn't really present in this game and they were so so strong right till the very end of course he did have to dive onto the fountain to kill forgiven uh, and spoil out his perfect record by the end but. yeah i mean it, it is a big relief for gambit fans out there and there is quite a lot of them let's there be are. fair they've been